by the end of this in-depth review, you're going to know the case study back to front and be able to perform strongly in the upcoming exam. Let's check it out. So this is what the front page of the case study looks like. Unit 2, Financial Capability for the Medium and Long Term. It's for the May 2023 examination. You will get a copy of this, a blank copy within the exam, as well as obviously your question paper. So in this video, we're going to look at case study 2, which begins on page number 12. I'll read through each paragraph, then we'll discuss each one. Case study 2. Harry is 26 and works near Newcastle as a dentist. Harry finished his studies two years ago and has been working in the local area, covering shifts at various dental practices. He has been looking for a permanent role close to his hometown. So, the fact that Harry's 26, he's in the young adult stage of the life cycle, he works near Newcastle as a dentist and finished his studies two years ago. We'd expect, as he finished his studies so recently, for him to have significant student loans, but later on in the case study, it actually says that he used some money from an investment plan to pay off his student loans, so he doesn't have to consider student loans as an expenditure. He's been working in the local area, covering shifts at various dental practices. Someone who covers shifts at various dental practices is known as a locum dentist, just in case you get that key term within your actual exam. A locum, that's L-O-C-U-M. And he's been looking for a permanent role close to his hometown. So he's eager, by the sounds of it, just from this first paragraph, to move closer to his hometown. And later on in the case study, we'll find that there's a good opportunity for him to do just that. The second paragraph begins, Harry's parents have their own dental practice, and recently Harry's dad had to retire due to ill health. Harry's dad offered Harry to take over from him. Harry's parents had hoped that Harry would join them at some point, and this now provides Harry with the opportunity. So in the first paragraph, we found that he wants to move back to his hometown. This could be an ideal opportunity for him to get a full-time role at his parents' own dental practice. He's obviously likely to benefit significantly in terms of uh, monetary uh, financial payments if he works for his own parents' practice, we'd like to assume anyway, um, which would presumably give him a significant amount of disposable income. This is important because later on we'll find that Harry is eager to buy a house which is potentially significantly larger than he needs and therefore it's likely to cost significantly more than a smaller property would. So the fact that his income might increase significantly by moving back home and uh, back to his hometown and working in his parents' dental practice it can only be judged as a good thing. Now, Harry's dad had to retire due to ill health. We'll find out later on in the case study that Harry is also keen to retire early, uh, having seen his dad work until illness preventing him from continuing. So Harry is also keen, we'll find out later on, to pay towards a pension uh, or pension planning. Third paragraph. When Harry was born, his parents started an investment plan, and this plan is now worth £60,000, even after Harry paid off his student loans. Harry now has access to this money, and he has started to look at buying a property with a mortgage in his hometown, as this is where he would like to stay long term. So, when Harry was born, his parents started an investment plan, and it's now worth 60000 So, presumably, he spent some of that investment plan paying off his student loans. So, it must have been worth more beforehand. So his parents started that when he was born, and it's still worth £60,000. we will find later on that Harry wishes to put 45000 of that 60000 i.e. 75%, towards a deposit for the property. And he expects to use the remaining 15000 towards repair costs and uh, the moving costs. Harry now has access to the money and he's started to look at buying a property with a mortgage. So it will be a mortgaged property and therefore he will have to make mortgage repayments. It's worth uh, bearing in mind 
and studying and revising all about mortgages. This case study is heavily um, heavily focused around that financial product. So therefore, make sure you're aware of the difference between a repayment mortgage and an interest-only mortgage, fixed rate, variable rate, etc. He wants to stay in his hometown long term, that is a key point, and therefore it suggests that once he moves into a house he's unlikely to want to leave it. Later on in the case study we also find that he's keen to have a fixed rate mortgage for long term as well. So when we come to analyse the three options that are provided for us later on in the case study, we need to bear in mind that he wants to stay in his hometown long term. Fourth paragraph. How he likes the principle of a fixed rate mortgage and has been doing some research into long term fixed rate mortgages. He does not want a variable mortgage or a short term fixed deal as he does not want his payments to change if there is a shift in interest rates. <coughs> Later on in the case study, we'll find that there has in fact been a shift in interest rates and if you've been following the news recently you'll know that there's certainly been a, a recent shift in interest rates upwards. For net many years they were stable, uh, very low rates, historically low rates in fact, uh, but over the last year, 18 months, they have started to increase. Now, Harry likes the principle of a fixed rate mortgage. We can assume that Harry's fairly risk averse based upon a number of points made in this case study. He wants a fixed rate mortgage. He wants a long term fixed rate mortgage at that. He doesn't want a variable mortgage, i.e. he doesn't want to take the risk of a variable or a short term deal because he doesn't want his payments to change if there is a shift in interest rates. Later on, we'll find that he's consulted an independent mortgage advisor, and that mortgage advisor has actually suggested that he pay more attention to shorter rate mortgages. So the expert seems to recommend that he looks at shorter rate, whereas at the moment, Harry seems to like the principle of a fixed rate mortgage, which is in the long term. So a really key potential issue which may be assessed within your within your exam in May. Fifth paragraph. Harry has seen an ideal property. Although it is bigger than he currently needs, he sees it as a potential family home in the future. The house is valued at £300,000, and although the house needs some repairs, he feels he can make it work. Harry has viewed the property and has agreed to buy it. Harry has decided to put down a 15% deposit of 45000 leaving the remaining money for moving costs and house repairs. So, he's found the property and he's agreed to buy it, so there's no question over that. It is just about how he's going to mortgage the property, essentially. That is the big decision of this case study. It's bigger, however, than he currently needs. That is a big decision for him to make. It's a bigger property than he currently needs, and therefore it's highly likely that it will be significantly more expensive than a property which may be seen as ideal size for him at his current stage of the life cycle. So because it's bigger than he needs, that could be something that, uh, that you may have to write about within the exam. However, he does see it as a potential family home in the future, which means that he could grow into a the home so to speak. He's 26 now, we'd assume that over the next 10 or 15 years he may wish to uh, get married <coughs> and potentially have children and therefore the house would be potentially more suited to his needs within the next decade or so. <coughs> the house is valued at 300,000 and it needs some repairs. That's a key point because Bearing in mind, if he is a busy working dentist, then he may not have the time to spare to do the repairs himself. So therefore, he may have to uh, contract it out to tradesmen. And this will increase the costs. And it also will mean that he won't be able to, we'd assume, relax in the property until the repairs are done. Although he does feel that he can make it work. He's viewed the property, he's agreed to buy it, he's decided to put down a 15% deposit. Remember, his, his investment plan, is, which he now has access to, is worth 60000 So he's going to put 75% of that 60000 down as a deposit. 
This would give Harry an 85% loan to value ratio and he would be expected obviously to pay the interest rate that goes along with this. This is important because if we compare him getting a £300,000 house to say a £180,000 house for example, if you put down the same deposit of 45000 that would, with a £180,000 house, give him a loan-to-value ratio of 75%. That would mean that he'd get a preferential or a better interest rate than he would currently be offered on a £300,000 house, significantly reducing his monthly repayments. So the fact that he's decided to get a house which is currently bigger than he currently needs, it, is, it has pros and cons. It's also worth noting, and uh, this is quite a technical aspect, but with stamp duty, usually it would be significantly higher if there was a, a higher cost of the house. However, for a first-time buyer like Harry, he will get a stamp duty allowance, i.e. an amount of um, a sale price where you don't have to pay stamp duty of up to 300000 So. The fact is, he's actually maxing out, um, he's utilising his full stamp duty allowance, in, i.e. not having to pay it, by buying a house at the top end of the, the time when he doesn't have to pay any stamp duty. So that's a, quite a key point as well. So that could be a positive for buying a house valued at 300000 The next paragraph begins, Harry has visited his local independent mortgage advisor, who has presented Harry with several fixed rate mortgage deals. The deals are over different time periods, and all have the 40 year mortgage term which he is looking for. His mortgage advisor has told Harry to consider the interest rate of each deal, as he may be better off taking a shorter term, fixed rate deal, and then finding a better deal at the end of that period, dependent on the interest rates at the time. So, first things first, independent mortgage advisor. This links to topic 9 of unit 2, that is the topic on sources of information and advice. I've done knowledge blasts on unit 2, so check out the links within the description if you're unsure of sources of information and, uh, and advice. How he has visited his local independent mortgage advisor says so there's, there's pros and cons straight away of uh, visiting independent mortgage advisors. Firstly, potentially the cost, which can be significant. But independent mortgage advisors are likely to have access to deals that he may not be able to access himself from high street banks and building societies. They will also, because they're um, monitored and by the Financial Conduct Authority, Harry can rest assured that he's receiving independent, impartial advice, which is tailored to his personal needs. Harry is presented with several fixed-rate mortgage deals. It said earlier that Harry wants a fixed-rate mortgage deal, but it did also say that he wanted a long-term fixed-rate mortgage deal. We see later on that the three deals are in fact, all 40-year term, but the initial deal, one is a 40-year term, which is what he wants, one is a 10-year, and one is just a 5-year deal. So, um, yeah, the mortgage advisor has given him a full range of options, but based upon what Harry said earlier, his preference initially may be to go for the longer-term one. However, his mortgage advisor has told him to consider the interest rate of each deal. If uh, Harry chooses to go with a far longer deal, banks, building societies, lenders will generally penalise a borrower for a longer deal. Of course, if the interest rates go up um, and someone's tied into a lower deal, a lower interest rate deal, that is essentially money that the bank is not getting through in increased interest rates. So they do penalise you in the first instance by charging a higher interest rate for a longer deal. However, that said, dependent on the interest rate at the time, the final line of that paragraph, it's very difficult to tell what is going to happen to interest rates at the time, uh, sorry, in the future, and therefore, Harry, uh, we can under, you know, we can we can understand the, his point of view that he wants a a long term deal just in case interest rates go up. So, it is 
it's a risk averse attitude uh, one to take that you know you are essentially guaranteeing your repayment albeit it might be slightly higher because you'll be paying a slight premium to have a longer deal however you get the peace of mind that goes with that the final paragraph on page number 12 Harry also needs advice on his pension planning, but wants to limit his current spending. However, having seen his dad work until illness prevented him from continuing, Harry believes he should invest in a pension plan so he can retire early. The fact is, he wants to retire early. This is taken actually from topic one of unit two. This is topic one, needs, wants and aspirations. And it also touches on topic five, which is financial planning. Once again, I've done knowledge blasts on these topics. Check out the link in the description. So, he needs advice on pension planning. He wants to limit his current spending, but he, he does, uh, does want to pay towards some sort of plan so that he can retire early. He's uh, got increased motivation to retire early because obviously he saw what happened to his dad illness prevented him from continuing his job. So that is extra motivation for Harry to get in place a good plan so that he can retire early. The thing is, of course, if he buys a house which is significantly more expensive than he currently needs, he is going to have increased outgoings each month. So that will potentially limit the amount he could maybe put towards investments, say, and therefore reduce the possibility of him retiring early in the future. So at the top of page number 13, the title is Research. And the, for the rest of the case study, um, until we get to the table at the end, this these are all uh, different research um, articles which will be really helpful in helping you to answer any questions. It's very important that you refer your answers back to some of this research um, because that's what it's there for. So, top of page 13. When anticipating the potential changes to interest rates in the future, it is worth considering what has happened historically. The graph below shows the Bank of England base rate changes over approximately the last 30 years to September 2022. So the Bank of England, in particular the Monetary Policy Committee at the Bank of England, is responsible for setting the base rate. And you can see at the end of uh, well, 1992, a number of years ago, the interest rate was actually significantly higher than it is now. It was over 10%. It came down over the next few years to hovered around 6% and fluctuated until it got to maybe ooh, late 2002, 2003, at which point it slowly rised from 4% to almost 6 again, and then drastically dropped after the financial crisis of 2007, 8. Uh, and it dropped all the way almost to zero. In fact, 0.25%, at one point getting down to 0.1%. And then it wasn't until mid to late 2022, last year, that it started climbing and you can see in this table the source is the Bank of England and the and this came from the BBC website that it climbed in September 22 to 2.25% and those who have been following the news recently will know that it's actually climbed over 4% now as we speak so we're on a trajectory at the moment where the interest rates are going up and Harry will have to take that into account when he chooses his mortgage the fact is, if interest rates are going up at the moment, he may wish to lock in for a longer term deal. But at the same time, there is no guarantee that they won't come down again at some point. The first article considers the pros and cons of a longer mortgage term and the important differences between mortgage deals and mortgage terms. So what is the longest mortgage term you can get in the UK? The maximum mortgage term you can get in the UK is 40 years. A longer mortgage term means lower monthly repayments relative to the amount you're borrowing. But it does also mean that you repay more money in total. 
It also means a far longer commitment, so a 40-year mortgage isn't suitable for everyone. Here you can find out more about the pros and the cons of having a very long mortgage term. So maximum term you can get is 40 years. The good thing about getting a 40-year mortgage, of course, compared to say a 25-year mortgage, is that your monthly repayments will be that much smaller, which will be more manageable for Harry, who we assume is single and therefore only has one income. It means it also or it also means that you repay more in total, however, because it's over a longer period, even though there's a smaller repayments, because you're making that many more repayments, you will repay more in total. However, most mortgages, and in fact the three which we're looking at later on, come with the option to overpay. Usually, many mortgages have the limit of overpaying by 10% of the remaining balance each year without penalty. So, for example, if you've got £200,000 left on your mortgage, you can overpay by £20,000 in that particular year without penalty. However, as it says, a 40-year mortgage isn't suitable for everyone. It really ties you in for a long, long time. Yes, people have the opportunity to remortgage and therefore get out of the deal. This is a great point you may wish to put in your essay. There is always the option to get out of a mortgage deal, albeit there may be a penalty involved in that. For example, if you're locked in at a very high interest rate and interest rates drop or dip significantly, you can pay a penalty and get out of that mortgage and remortgage to a lower deal. But of course, the initial penalty will be, or is likely to be, significant. So the pros and cons. What's the difference between mortgage term and mortgage deal? Top of page number 14. Remember that mortgage term and mortgage deal are two different things. The overall mortgage term is the total length of time you will take to repay your loan assuming you don't make overpayments. The mortgage deal, on the other hand, is the period of fixed or variable favourable interest rates at the start of your mortgage term, which may last up to 10 or 15 years, but is more usually between 2 and 5 years. When your deal is coming to an end, you remortgage to another one. So, <coughs> mortgage term. The total length of time you'll take to repay your loan if you do not make overpayments. As we just discussed, there is the option to overpay in all three options that Harry is looking at. Usually it's up to 10% of the remaining balance. The deal, on the other hand, is the period of fixed or favourable interest rates at the start of your mortgage term. Some people refer to it as a teaser rate at the start of the mortgage term. It's essentially the, the time where you'll pay a fixed rate of interest is usually a lower rate than what it re reverts to after that deal is up. It may last up to 10, 15 years. In fact, one of the mortgages we'll be looking at later, it's a whole lifetime mortgage, so you'll pay the same rate of interest for the whole 40 years in this case. But most of the mortgages are between two and five year mortgage deals. When the deal comes to an end, you can remortgage to another deal. Of course, when you do remortgage, there may be costs, fees associated with remortgaging. So that is something that one has to take into account. When you remortgage, you may or may not extend your mortgage term. For example, if you start on a 25 year mortgage, and remortgage and remortgage five years later, you might switch to a 20 year mortgage term. Of course, there's not, you don't always have to do that. If the bank is happy to um, renew you at that 25 year mortgage term, you, you, can, you can renew to a new mortgage that is 25 years. However, later on, we'll see that several mortgage companies will only will ensure that your mortgage term finishes before the date of your retirement, for example. The pros and cons of a long-term mortgage. Long-term mortgages aren't right for everyone. Here are some of the pros and cons. So, advantages. Your monthly repayments, as we discussed earlier, will be smaller. This is because you'll be spreading the repayments over a longer period of time. Here's an example. 
So let's say you're a first time buyer with a £180,000 mortgage at 2% interest. The monthly repayments on that 25 year term would be £763 per month. If you took a 40 year term, i.e. 15 years longer, monthly repayments would just be £545, so significantly cheaper, over £200 per month cheaper. But of course you'd be paying that amount for another 15 years. Another advantage of a long term mortgage is that affordability may be better. When you apply for the mortgage, the lender must assess how much you can afford to borrow and how well you'll be able to maintain your monthly repayments. They also need to ensure that you can afford to pay if interest rates were to rise. So this is sometimes referred to as stress testing someone's affordability. When you go to um, a mortgage consultation or apply for a mortgage, you declare your income, you declare your outgoings, and based upon that, they see how much money you've got left over to pay for your mortgage repayments. Now, if interest rates go up by a quarter of a percent, a half a percent, one percent, your repayments, if you're out of your initial term, sorry, out of your initial deal, will also go up. So they'll do a stress test on your ability to pay if, say, the interest rates went up one, two, three, maybe four or even five percent. The thing is, if they stress test you up to say five percent, if uh, if mortgage rates, if interest rates go up five percent, it's it's likely that at that sort of level, some people may not be able to f afford the increased repayments if they opt for a shorter term, and therefore. Opting for a longer term mortgage gives you the best chance of being accepted for a mortgage based upon your affordability because the monthly repayments will be that much smaller. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, even if you opt for a long term mortgage, you can still overpay in order to bring down that term significantly. Let's look at the disadvantages of a long term mortgage then. You will pay more interest overall. Quite simply, a long-term mortgage is more expensive in total, even though your individual repayments may be lower. This means you should weigh up that factor carefully before taking out a long mortgage. It's absolutely true that if you make no overpayments at all, having a long-term mortgage will be more expensive in total. However, as we said earlier, for some people who get stress tested on mortgages, affordability may be a key issue in whether their application is successful or not. So they might have to, in fact, be forced to go down the route of a longer term mortgage. Another oh, another example is here. So, for example, um, with a 25 year term, you'd pay just under 49,000 in interest, but with a 40 year term, you'd pay 82,000 in interest, a whopping 33,000 pound more in interest alone. A huge amount, so it really highlights the the negative of getting a longer term mortgage and not making any overpayments. Second disadvantage, you're in debt for longer. It's absolutely true. With a 40 year mortgage, it will be 40 years before you own your own home outright. For perspective, this means that if you were to take out your mortgage age 65, which is very young for a first time buyer, you would not have paid off the mortgage until you were 65. Bear in mind the pension age currently is 66. So it is a significant commitment to take on when you are so young. As a, a key point is that a great deal can change in 40 years, no doubt about it. But remember, even if you do take out a 40 year mortgage, you can make overpayments, as we discussed already, but you're also able to get out of that mortgage by paying an early repayment charge or uh, paying a fee to, to get out of it and remortgage to a different deal. So that is a good option if you want to give a recommendation for Harry within your essay. How should I choose the length of my mortgage term? Now, when applying for your mortgage, the length of the term will be one of your key considerations. It's best to talk to an independent mortgage broker 
or an independent financial advisor who specialises in mortgages about the right term for you. Your advisor will take into account all your circumstances, not just the mortgage's immediate affordability, and may suggest alternative ways to reduce your monthly repayments rather than simply extending the mortgage. So, length of the term will be a good consideration to make, although, as we said, there are flexible ways you can get out of a longer term mortgage or pay it off sooner. The case study in this uh, specific source is unbiased.co.uk recommends it's best to talk to an independent mortgage broker. That is exactly what Harry has done. Um, of course, he may have had to pay for that um, advice, but it's highly likely that, as we said earlier, independent mortgage brokers may have access to mortgages which aren't readily available on um, walking you know, down the street to your local bank. It, they all also may have expert knowledge, so it would be really useful for a first-time buyer like Harry to have the T's and C's, the terms and conditions, explained to him in depth. Your advisor will take into account your circumstances, not just the mortgage's immediate affordability, and may suggest alternative ways to reduce monthly payments rather than simply extending the mortgage. So, halfway down page 15, can I shorten a long-term mortgage once I've taken it out? Another option that Harry may choose to take is to take out a long-term mortgage initially, but to shorten it later on by remortgaging. In many ways, this can be seen as an attractive option. Your personal circumstances may improve over time. You may start to earn more, inherit money, and the same may apply to your partner. This could enable you to afford higher monthly repayments. So, as we discussed, he could take out a longer-term mortgage initially, but shorten it later on by remortgaging. Bear in mind, if he takes out a initial mortgage deal that is very long, 10, 15, or even a lifetime mortgage, where he'll have, to, not a lifetime mortgage, but he'll have to pay the same amount for the life of his mortgage, then uh, he will have to pay a penalty charge if he wishes to remortgage within that initial deal. So that is something he has to consider. And the point about the same may apply to your partner, at the moment Harry doesn't have a partner, although he did allude earlier to the fact that it might be a good family home in the future. So we could assume that potentially over the next 10-15 years he may be looking to get married, have a children, etc. At the bottom of page number 15, there are other factors that Harry may need to consider for a 40-year mortgage term. The next article from which considers the importance of a person's financial plans. I'll be releasing more videos to help you get ready for the upcoming exam, so make sure you hit subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when these videos are released. Let's get back to the video. Page 16. Who can get a 40-year mortgage? Which analysis has found that there are currently 37 lenders theoretically offering first-time buyer mortgages with 40-year terms. So 37 lenders theoretically offering first-time buyer, like Harry, mortgages with 40-year terms. So quite a selection. However, most lenders set caps on the maximum age you can be when you come to the end of your loan. So the products are only suitable for younger buyers. Harry might be classed as a younger buyer, He's only 26, and with the, more, with the mortgage term of 40 years, that would still enable him to just pay it off before retirement age if he was not to make any overpayments. Our analysis of MoneyFax data found that a third of providers had a maximum age limit that would mean borrowers in their late 20s and 30s might actually find it hard to secure the deal. So how he's approaching his late 20s now, so if he, he, he might find that a third of the providers, in this case roughly 13 or 14 of those 37, might, he might find it hard to secure the deal from those lenders. Other factors to consider, the middle of page 16, your age actually isn't the only factor that could be a barrier to getting a 40-year mortgage. 
Lenders will normally ask when you plan to retire, when considering your eligibility for a deal. So the fact is, Harry wants to retire early. And therefore, some lenders, he's 26 now, if he wants a 40-year mortgage, but is keen to retire when he's sort of I don't know, 60, 55, 50 even, some lenders might say, no, that's, that's not suitable for us. You're retiring early, so you're not eligible for one of our deals. So that's something that Harry may have to consider. And in fact, the Kensington mortgage, uh, he'll have to double check that they are happy if he retires early. However, on the flip side, according to David Blake from Which Mortgage Advisors, some lenders will allow a working age of up to 80, depending on the nature of your job. A manual worker, such as a builder, is unlikely to be accepted up to this age, but if you have a less labour-intensive job, you may be able to pass this check. Harry is in a job which isn't labour-intensive, However, um, he does want to retire early, and is this going to be a significant factor for him, a working age of up to 80? Well, he's 26 at the moment, so yes, some lenders will allow a working age of up to 80, but even with a maximum mortgage term of 40 years, it will only take him up to age 66. So, useful to know, but perhaps not relevant uh, in Harry's case. Other lenders will permit you to borrow past retirement age if they can see you are contributing towards your retirement, i.e. paying into a pension. So, other lenders permit you to borrow past retirement age, so you retire and then you'll still continue to pay towards your pension, sorry, towards your mortgage from your pension. So, if lenders see that you're contributing towards paying into a pension for example so that they see that pension pot increasing that means they're going to be more comfortable and and see you as more able to continue paying towards a mortgage in your retirement that said if your finances improve you could remortgage to a deal with a shorter term or overpay your mortgage to reduce your debt and cut the time it will take you to pay it off so once again flexible borrowing because you can pay a penalty charge and remortgage whilst you're in an initial deal but once you're out of an initial deal deal you can remortgage to another deal with a shorter term better interest rate or you could overpay your mortgage to reduce your debt and actually cut the time it takes you to pay it off so moving on to page number 17 then here are the mortgage examples that Harry is considering. All the mortgages below are repayment mortgages, with, repay with payments calculated over a 40-year term and a loan-to-value of 85%. So these are the ones he is considering. This is a potential question you may be asked within your exam, i.e. which mortgage should Harry go for, recommend which one. They're all repayment mortgages, so their repayment as opposed to interest only so he will be paying back to the bank interest as well as paying off the initial balance the principal payments are calculated over a 40-year term which is what he wanted he wanted a long initial term longer term mortgage and a loan to value of 85 percent remember that is his forty-five thousand pound deposit on his three hundred thousand pound property so that's a loan to value of 85 percent so let's have a look at the three options. The three options being Kensington, Nationwide and Halifax. The initial mortgage deal, remember this is the, the deal, this is the time period in which the rate of interest um, is the teaser rate, is the lower rate, it remains fixed at the lower rate. So with Kensington, the initial mortgage deal is 40 years. So for the whole 40 years, Harry is going to be paying the same amount, which is 4.76%. It's not going to revert to a different uh, interest rate like the other two options. It will remain at 4.76% for the whole 40 years. The monthly repayment for the whole 40 years is going to be £1,189. 
that is really good for Harry to know so that he can budget. He can budget for the next 40 years of his life, essentially, because he's going to know exactly how much his mortgage is going gonna, is gonna to cost. With inflation, of course, £1,189 monthly repayment, even though it seems a lot right now, in 30, 35, 40 years is, is likely to be a lot less have a lot less value to it so it's going to seem like a lot less in a few decades time so 40 years he can plan his budget he can know his expenditure we can assume he's fairly risk averse so being fixed and locked into that for 40 years will mean that he could have peace of mind and potentially less anxious about interest rates increasing but of course, being locked into it for so long, if interest rates decrease, he will have to pay a significant early repayment charge in order to get out of that deal. The fees as well for the Kensington account are significant. They're over £500 more than for the Nationwide and Halifax options. £1,499 fees, that is what you have to pay up front to arrange the mortgage. Interest rate after initial deal, obviously it's not applicable because the initial mortgage deal runs for the whole of the 40 years. And when we come on to the more information, overpayments are allowed up to 10% without a charge. So that's good. He can overpay if he wishes to reduce his mortgage term. If Harry overpays beyond that limit, he's going to be subject to an early repayment charge. That's fairly standard uh, across mortgages. Now let's look at nationwide. So the initial mortgage deal is for 10 years. So this still provides him with a decade, decades worth of uh, security, so to speak, um, when it comes to knowing exactly what interest rate he's going to be paying. He's going to be paying 4.09%, which is, as you can see, significantly lower than the interest rate he's going to be paying with Kensington. So he's going to be paying 4.09% and that will equate to monthly repayments in the initial term of 10 years of £1,080. <coughs> so £109 less every single month than Kensington. That's not a small amount, I'm sure you'll agree. £109 less per month, every month. Um, in this case for 10 years, which is the initial mortgage deal that Nationwide are offering. The fees are also significantly less than Kensington, uh, only 999 However, after that initial deal of 10 years, this mortgage will revert to a higher interest rate of 5.24%, and therefore after those 10 years, if Harry chooses to stay with Nationwide, then we, he would be paying a higher interest rate than he would have otherwise been after them 10 years with Kensington. That said, as we mentioned earlier, there is the option for Harry to remortgage after his initial mortgage deal has expired, or indeed before that if he is happy to pay the, um, an early redemption penalty. In the other information at the bottom, overpayments are allowed in this mortgage as well, up to a certain limit. It doesn't specify the certain limit. That might be provided within the um, extra information you're given on the day of the exam. But there's also a £500 cashback on completion. That's good. That's good for Harry to know. Um, it's a nice perk, but in the grand scheme of things, £500 cashback is is uh, is potentially quite insignificant when we uh, come on to looking at what um, he would actually be paying back over, say, five years. There is also an early redemption penalty if the mortgage is paid off in full in the initial term. So just like the other two, it's not a significant factor because it's the same for all of these options. There will be an early redemption penalty if the mortgage is paid off early, essentially, within that initial deal. And then we come on to Halifax. This is only off an initial mortgage deal of five years. Now, 
Remember in the case study how he said he wants a long-term deal. A long-term deal, we can assume, is significantly more than just five years. So this is going against what he initially said he wanted. However, this is also the recommendation, the advice that the independent mortgage broker gave him, that he should look at shorter-term deals. So it's whether Harry decides to accept that advice or not, which will determine whether he chooses to go for a shorter deal or not. Now, the mortgage broker potentially suggested shorter terms because, as we can see, the interest rate for a five-year mortgage is actually under 4%. It's just 3.92%, which could be very attractive, especially when we look at the monthly repayment. So, £1,053. £1,053 over £130 less per month compared to Kensington. And £27 per month less, in fact, than nationwide. So it's by far the cheapest monthly repayment within that initial five-year term. It's actually also the cheapest one in terms of fees at £995. Yes, the difference to nationwide is just 4%, four percent, four four pounds, sorry, and therefore is rather insignificant and negligible. But compared to Kensington, Harry would save himself over five hundred pounds by going with the Halifax deal. That could be significant at the current time he's in. Uh, he's buying a new house. It will need repairs. It will need furnishing. So therefore, a cheaper fee might be attractive to him in the first instance. Now, let's have a little think then about the monthly repayment in the initial term. The one thing we can compare all of these three accounts is within the first five years. So I know that Kensington, the initial deal would run for 40 and that Nationwide would be for 10, but Halifax is for five, so let's have a look how much Harry would actually pay back to each of these lenders within the first five years that he holds each of these mortgages. Now with Kensington, at £1,189 monthly repayment, if we times that by 12 and then times it by 5, that would be times 12 for the year, times it by 5 for five years, he would be paying back to Kensington £71,340 within the first five years. If we compare this to nationwide, 1,080 times 12 times 5, it'd be paying 64,800 back to nationwide. You can see straight away there that the difference is significant. In fact, well over £6,000 difference over the five years. But then when we come to the Halifax, the difference is even more startling. In the first five years of the initial mortgage deal, he'd be paying £63,180 to Halifax. So you can see there, well over £6,000 compared to Kensington. And actually, over £1,000 less than he would be paying to Nationwide over those five years. It mounts up, even though compared to Nationwide, it's only £27 cheaper per month. Over the five years, it works out to be a significant amount. That is why I said earlier, the £500 cashback on completion compared to the £250 cashback, which is offered by Halifax, is actually rather negligible when we tally up the uh, overall amount that Harry would be paying back to these lenders. Just like Nationwide, however, the five-year mortgage term will come to an end and the repayments will revert to a 5.24% interest rate. This is more than both Nationwide and Kensington offer. However, remortgaging may reduce the amount of interest he's able to pay dependent on the interest rates at the time. So remember, it's a bit of a gamble taking a shorter um, a shorter term, a, a, sorry, a shorter deal, because interest rates might go up. However, it's also, some might say, a bit of a gamble agreeing to a longer initial deal, because interest rates might go down. So 
it really depends on on where where how he thinks interest rates may go, and for that he may be worth seeking professional advice. He can find that advice from his independent mortgage broker, and that would be a good question to ask uh, that professional. As we said, there's £250 cash back on completion with the Halifax. It's a nice perk, but once again, it's negligible compared to the amount of money he'd save with the Halifax over the first five years of having that mortgage. More videos will be coming out soon to help you get ready for the upcoming exam, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when these videos are released.